motivated you to suffer can bishop i thank god for that amen but i'm so glad to be pastor uh, you said we're so glad that you're the pastor i'm so glad just to be saved uh, because amen if they take the bishop away and they take the pastor away i got to make sure that i'm saved uh, because it ain't like the bishop gonna get to heaven quicker than the soul the soul is gonna be the one that strips down and after they bury me in this church and put me in a casket and they take the bishop ring off my finger and they take the bishop necklace off my neck the only thing I'm gonna have uh, is my relationship with God so you better make your calling and election sure somebody shout hallelujah he said I'm gonna exalt my throne which means God already gave him a throne but he said I want the throne to be a little higher those of you filled with the Holy Ghost, you got the best thing already. Amen. Is it at least 20 of you in here with the Holy Ghost? Lift your hands up in here. You got the best thing. You got the best gifts God could give. Amen. Apartments won't make the Holy Ghost better. And houses don't make the Holy Ghost better. And cars don't make the Holy Ghost better. Because you can lose it all. And as long as you got the Holy Spirit, you have the operating system to make sure you make the rapture. He says, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Come on, read with me in verse 14. I will do what? Uh-huh. And I will, I will be like the most high. You say, what's wrong with that? Don't we say I want to be like Christ? But God did not give celestial beings the ability to be like him. He only gave the children of God the ability to be conformed to the image of his dear son. We have a privilege as the New Testament church that Michael the angel does not have. Uh, Michael does not have the ability to be molded into the character of God. He has to do what he's told uh, without will. Uh, but the child of God has a will uh, which means even after we're filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, I can choose to not praise God. Uh, God says I want my children to have choice. Uh, I want them to love me because they love me. Uh, I want them to come to church because they love me. Uh, I want them to serve me because they love me. He says I will ascend, I'm sorry y'all, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit the Lord said I'm going to cut you down the Lord said as soon as I see it in your heart I'm going to cut it down as soon as I see your mind going the wrong way I'm going to cut it down as soon as I see your lips about to say the wrong thing he said I'm going to cut it down turn back to Genesis now because the Bible makes it clear now I see you, Pastor Chase. I want you to understand that the Bible shows us through Isaiah and Ezekiel what we call in theology the gap theory. And that is that between Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 and 2, something must have happened. Because in verse number 2, the Bible says that the earth was without form and it was void. In the Hebrew, that's tohu va bohu, which means an utter messed a wasteland. But we know in verse 1 that God made the heaven and the earth with perfection. So now we see because of the fall of Lucifer becoming a Satan, he has now crashed and destroyed the beautiful work of God in verse 1 because now you see it without form and it's void. You see now the waters don't know where to go. The earth is now submerged. It's all jacked up because of the fall of Lucifer. I want you to know chaos ensues in your life when you fall.
And it's not just about you, but it's about the people around you. Some of you parents in here make a choice for God for your children's sake. Because if you fall, amen, everything attached to you might come tumbling down. I know that it's a lot of pressure on you to live right because sometimes you want to get jiggy with it. But I want to encourage you to stay with your faith and understand that your cousins and your relatives, uh, the reason they pull on you is because you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you ever fall, everything else will fall and their blood will be on uh, your hands. Uh, look at somebody and say, his spirit. The Bible says that the earth was without form. It, it was all deluged. It was just like in Noah's day, but worse. Because I believe, Sister hey man, Risa, that there is not a contradiction between science and the Bible when it comes to the age of the earth. Because we know that God, when he makes anything, he makes it full grown. So this is the reason why they say that the earth is a million years old but man has only been in this space for 6,000 there is no contradiction because we don't know how long this deluge took place but the Lord allowed for the deluge to go long enough until anything any will any attempt any agenda of Satan it had to be squashed sometimes the Lord brings people in the church just like that he allows for their life to be a bitter hell uh, and their relatives have been praying for them uh, but the Lord allows for you to go through the lowest of the low long enough uh, so that when he comes in like a flood uh, it allows for you to accept him readily uh, some people that were praying for altar workers uh, they ain't ready yet uh, we gotta send them back to their seat uh, we just say Lord bless them and cover them uh, because they not ready yet uh, but the Lord has a way of allowing chaos to hit your life uh, and allow for the deluge to hit your life uh, and when you show up to church we ain't gotta tell you it's time for the altar call uh, but you'll come running down to the front uh, and you'll say it's me it's me oh lord standing in the need of prayer he says now that it's without form and it's void and darkness was upon the face of the deep because God had created but now because of the fall of Satan it is now under darkness it's under darkness which means it has not the ability to access God by itself it has to have the Savior come in and do something to it it in order for it to come back together I'm preaching to somebody watching on Facebook you don't have the ability to get yourself back together you don't have your ability to put your life back together it's going to take for an act of God look at your neighbor and say it takes God in order to turn someone around it takes God for someone to come out of addiction it takes takes God for a family to come together. It takes God for children to come back home. And the Bible says that there was darkness upon the face of the deep, which means that the waters had risen so high that you could no longer see earth anymore. But thanks be to God, the next sentence says it this way, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters when God sees your chaos the spirit has the power to move this was an effectual move it literally means to hover and to shake which means God was not just on top it was getting into the layers of the water and creating waves God is trying to create waves at Bethesda trying to bring us into a place of power but it takes for him to step into the middle of our darkness you've been depressed all week that's darkness you've been sad all week that's darkness you've been bitter all week that's darkness you've been in sin back and forth that's darkness but the spirit of the Lord is about to hover lift your hands up and say Lord Come walk in me. Uh, 
Lord, come talk through me. Lord, come move through me. Lord, come shake me. Lord, come move me. Lord, come rattle it up. Come turn it around. Come place my feet on solid ground. His spirit began to move upon the face of the waters. And anytime God begins to move, he's about to speak. I wonder is there anybody here that says I need a word from God? Well, now that he's moving, you can lift up your ear because God's about to speak. And God said, let there be light. I command light in the house, light in your life. Light in your family, light in your body, light in your future, light on your children, light on your spouse, light on your job, light in your church. In Jesus' name, so say it. Stand up. His spirit had to come and rectify and bring back into existence what he created from the beginning. Sister Garcia, you know, I love those TV shows on HGTV. One of my favorite is this show called Hometown. And they go, maybe it's because it's in Mississippi. That's where all my people from. And they're in Monroe, Mississippi. And all they do is find beat up houses. and they restore them back to their original glory. When you're receiving the Holy Ghost, the Lord is restoring people back to the way he saw them from the beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And watch this, every now and then on the show, you know what they do? They restore all of the elements that were significant to that day. And then they upgrade some things that need to be upgraded. When you get the Holy Ghost, guess what? God restores you back and then he gives you an upgrade. Uh, he says, this is going to be child of God 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. This child of God is going to be able to tell vaping, no. This child of God is going to be able to tell crystal meth, no. This child of God is going to be able to keep themselves even though they're getting older and make sure that they're not fornicating because this is a new version of my child. Because God wants his spirit in our life. Come on, lift your hands all over the house. We got Sunday school. God is not the author of confusion. So he brings order by his spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Many of us have been filled in this house. I come asking for refillings right now. The tank is running low, God. We come asking, Lord, that you would refill, refresh in this house and fill for the first time. We come asking, Lord, that we would step out of the chaos, step out of the confusion step out of the darkness by the moving of your spirit because only you can make that happen we've tried on our own long enough and now we turn it to you save your people again move or cause a revival to take place in prayer a revival in studying your word a revival in worship a revival in serving in the house of god 
Let visitors become frequent guests, frequent guests become members, members become disciples, disciples become leaders, leaders become apostles being sent out to do your work, Lord. Let there be a progression of us submitting to your spirit, which needs no growth, but Lord, grow us up by humbling us down. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, celebrate all over the house. For a few moments, the altar is open. If you want to come and kneel down, amen, we have prayer blankets for you. If you want to come and kneel, there's no embarrassment. Hallelujah. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. Somebody need prayer? Come on. With a heart of thanksgiving why don't you come for prayer I will bless thee oh Lord come on somebody I will bless thee oh Lord I will bless thee oh Lord with a heart of thanksgiving I, I will bless thee Someone else needs to come for prayer. Come on, just come for prayer. With my hands lifted up. And I'm all filled with praise. Those of you online, I need you to put in the chat. What do you need God to do for you? If you haven't given, you're giving right now, right online. Come on. I will bless thee, oh Lord. Come on, all. together and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and give him the glory. Come on, give him the honor. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, Jesus. Come on, just a few more moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory, glory, holy, holy, worthy, worthy, wonderful, wonderful, great, great, great God, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everyone standing on your feet, we're going to Sunday school. We have refreshments, amen, we have coffee, refreshments for you in Sunday school. Looks like we'll be able to start our lesson on time. But I want you to know that it takes God's spirit because that's what makes the difference. Don't cherish anything else but his spirit. David said, Lord, just don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Whew. And when I woke up this morning, I just thank the Lord that I thought about him first. My God. You know, when you think about Jesus, he can help you get past nightmares. Isn't that right? Wake up and put that Jesus on it. Come on, lift your hands. We're going home. Dear gracious Father, we bless you. You're such a good and kind God. We thank you for those who have received prayer. We pray that the prayer was effectual and fervent. For you said the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous, they avail much. Now, Lord, as we transition into Sunday school, I come asking that you would bless the lesson. Bless our offerings, Lord. Bless those who are online right now, Lord. We celebrate and thank them, Lord, for coming to the church this morning. 
allow us to be 